So good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm joined today by Transportation Secretary Jamie Tesler, Energy and Environmental, Environmental Affairs Secretary Katie Theo Herides, Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver, MBTA General Manager Steve Poftak, and MEMA Director Don Brantley to discuss our preparations for this week's storm. This is going to be a very big storm, probably one of the biggest we've experienced in the last few years. Conditions are expected to make travel nearly impossible, and we're urging everyone to the extent possible to stay home tonight and tomorrow. We'd also encourage people to order out tonight from your favorite restaurant, get the takeout, help them out. The storm's expected to move into our region late tonight and continue to impact Massachusetts throughout Saturday and Saturday night. The entire state is expected to get snow with blizzard conditions expected in coastal areas, including the Cape, and also along the South Shore and the North Shore and very significant snowfall across greater Boston and into central Mass. The rate of snowfall is expected to pick up significantly around 9 or 10 tomorrow morning. And the National Weather Service expects snowfall of between 2 and 4 inches per hour between 10 and 4 tomorrow. 2 to 4 inches an hour is basically whiteout conditions. So we would especially urge anyone who doesn't have a really good reason to be out, not to be out and on the roads during that period of time. I've been in touch with Governors Lamont in Connecticut and Governor McKee in Rhode Island, and our state agencies are coordinating with our counterparts in those states as well. The high rate of snowfall tomorrow means that it will be especially challenging for crews to clear the roads, especially during that period in the middle of the day and toward the end of the day, which makes it especially important to people, and I'm gonna say it again, to the fullest extent possible, stay off the roads so that the crews have the room that they need to do their work. Because two, two and four inches an hour for four or five or six hours is gonna be an enormously challenging task on the interstates, and it's gonna be an especially enormously challenging task on basically all of the other um, streets other than the interstates as well. Conditions on those roads as a result will be very hazardous so people really ought to plan to stay off the roads tomorrow. Have I made myself clear on staying off the roads tomorrow? Um, and I would urge all of the folks in the media to deliver that message as frequently and as clearly as possible as well. We really don't want people to be on those roads during that period for a number of reasons. We need to let the crews do their work. Because of the wind, it will be extremely hard to see anything at various points in time along the way. We don't want anybody to get hurt out there. We don't want people to get stuck. It's gonna be very cold tomorrow and tomorrow night and being stuck in a car is not where you wanna be when it's this cold. We'll see well below zero wind chills in many parts of Eastern Massachusetts and getting stuck in weather like that is dangerous. So please stay off the roads. The MassDOT folks are implementing a tractor trailer travel ban on all state highways starting tomorrow at 6 a.m. and continuing all day Saturday until midnight. Can't have trucks jackknifing and shutting down roads during conditions like this. Crews can't, crews can't clear the snow when that happens, and anyone else out there is put at serious risk of getting stranded. Neighboring states are also planning similar trailer truck bans and truck drivers should plan accordingly to stay off the roads. Again, everyone should stay off the road tomorrow unless it's an emergency or you have some very essential and absolute reason for being out. And if you do go out, be enormously careful because in many respects, the roads in most areas will be a constant, constant replenishing, replowing, replenishing, replowing, which is gonna make it unpredictable at times and it would be critically important if you do have to go out and drive, that you'd be very careful and go slow. We've been preparing for this storm, obviously, for a few days. Uh, we've deployed approximately 40 members of the National Guard to perform rescues if needed. They're positioned in a few different locations, mostly around eastern Massachusetts, to help with both high water rescues and stranded drivers. 
they'll be doing that work alongside our colleagues with the state police and in some cases local police as well. This should hopefully not be necessary because everyone will be staying off the roads. But if we do have stranded drivers, the guard has high profile vehicles that are better equipped to get through the drifts to reach people. MassDOT has approximately 3,900 pieces of state and vendor equipment available for snow and ice operations. And that includes over 1,400 plow and spreader combos, 2,100 plows and 460 front end loaders. Secretary Tesler will talk a little more about our efforts to keep the roads clear along with um, his colleagues at the DOT and Jonathan Gulliver in a minute. The MBTA has also been preparing for this storm over the past several days. Many lines will be running reduced storm schedules for those who need to take essential trips and many buses will likely be running on snow routes. The T will be deploying crews to clear snow across the system and plans to run snow trains to keep the tracks as clear as possible. If you have to travel on the T, you should definitely visit mbta.gov.com slash winter to check out for service alerts and schedules. General Manager Poptak will talk a little more about the T's preparation efforts in a moment. The storm's also going to bring high winds, including sustained winds of 40 to 50 miles an hour across eastern Massachusetts, and with gusts in some cases of up to 70 miles an hour on the Cape and in other pockets. As a result, we do expect that this storm will cause power outages, especially along the coast. We're working closely with the utility companies and their staging workers in a variety of areas that they consider to be strategic and soft spots so that they will be able to move once the winds die down and the snow stops to be able to move pretty aggressively to start to deal with those outages. The most important thing I can say there is they will need the wind to die down, the snow to stop, and obviously some of the work that we're gonna be doing to clear the roads um, to make it possible for them to get to where they need to get to actually do the work that they're gonna do. And as a result, MEMA is also reaching out to communities, particularly on the Cape and in the coastal areas of Southeastern Mass to help coordinate regional shelters and warming centers for those who do lose power. In a moment, Don Brantley from, from MEMA will talk about those efforts and Secretary Theo Herides will talk about the work we're doing with the utilities to respond to the power outages. In closing, once again, I'm gonna repeat it. We're urging everyone to avoid traveling tomorrow if at all possible. This kind of storm is nothing new for Massachusetts, but we have not had one like this for quite a while and everybody needs to take it very seriously. Avoid going out if you can and be sure to check up on your neighbors who may need help during the storm. The storm's expected to stop late Saturday night, but the roads on Sunday as the cleanup will continue will still be messy, especially in the Eastern part of Massachusetts. So if you're gonna go out on Sunday, I would urge you to be very careful for the same reasons we're urging everybody to be very careful on Saturday. And with that, I will turn it over to Secretary Tesla. Thank you, Governor. I'd like to discuss the steps MassDOT and the Commonwealth Transportation Agencies are taking to prepare for this weekend storm. First and foremost, we encourage everyone to think of their safety and make smart decisions Saturday to stay home if you can. This will be one of the most severe winter storms we've seen in a while. Eastern Massachusetts will be especially hard to hit in some areas, getting two to four inches of snow per hour and heavy wind gusts of more than 40 miles per hour, making challenging travel conditions throughout the day where it will not be possible to see the road ahead. Starting late tonight and tomorrow, Massachusetts will, be ex will experience blizzard-like conditions lasting into Saturday night. Some areas of eastern Massachusetts may have snowfall totals in the range of upwards of 24 inches, and coastal areas may have mild to moderate flooding due to the high tide late on Saturday. High wind gusts along eastern Massachusetts, along with the heavy snowfall, will limit visibility and blow snow onto road surfaces, quickly covering pavement that was previously cleared. MassDOT and the MBTA are well prepared for the storm and expect that a storm of this size will require a deployment of staff and equipment for a long duration for treatment and cleanup 
into the day on Sunday. Our snow and ice teams are ready and preparing, which the highway administrator will speak more to in, the, in a moment. There will also be a tractor trailer travel ban on all interstate highways starting tomorrow at 6 a.m. and continuing through midnight. Adjacent states have indicated similar measures and MassDOT urges all trucks to plan and truck drivers to plan accordingly and to stay off the roads to allow crews to work. Due to the impending storm, Amtrak is making a number of service changes for tomorrow. Some of these changes include Amtrak's Vermonter service Saturday is canceled in both directions. All New Haven Springfield Greenfield service, including the Valley Flyer, is canceled. All Amtrak Northeast Corridor service between Penn Station in New York and Boston is canceled. Sunday morning Amtrak may have additional cancellations depending on the conditions. General Manager Poftak is here and will speak more to the MBTA's operation and preparedness in a few moments. The Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles has postponed road tests scheduled on Saturday and AAA has announced that its Massachusetts customer centers will also be closed on Saturday. Massport advises travelers to flying to check with airlines as most airlines have already postponed flights scheduled for Saturday. All of these preparations and restrictions and measures are important to ensure the safety of the traveling public and allow us to plow and treat the roadways. Members of the public are encouraged to avoid travel and stay updated on reduced speed limits, tractor trailer bans, and roadway conditions by monitoring MassDOT, MBTA, and other agencies on social media and to continue to watch the news for updates. The most important message I have to to deliver today is that everyone should avoid travel unless absolutely necessary. Be extremely cautious if you do not have to be on the roadways and leave plenty of distance to let the crews do their job. We're expecting heavy snow, strong winds, and whiteout conditions. Stay off the road if you can. It will be a very difficult travel day. We appreciate everyone making safe decisions so we can focus on clearing and treating the roads throughout the state. And at this time, I'd, I'd ask um, Jonathan Gulliver to come up and share an additional comments on highway. All right, thank you, Secretary. As you've been hearing, the storm has the potential impact all areas of the Commonwealth. Travel will be very difficult tomorrow, especially in southeastern Massachusetts and on the Cape. We are expecting an intense rate of snowfall and high winds that will reduce visibility and lead to some hazardous and blizzard-like conditions in some areas throughout the day tomorrow. These challenging travel conditions are expected to, to last well into the, into the night. The current forecast indicates that snow could fall at a rate of up to four inches an hour. And as you heard, when it falls at that rate, our snow plows cannot keep up. Travel will be greatly impacted and we expect that roadways will be at sometimes dangerous to travel on and even impassable. In any case, you should expect hazardous conditions on the roadways. In order to keep our roadway safe and to reduce the potential hazards, we have implemented a truck ban, as the Secretary said, that starts at 6 a.m. on Saturday through midnight on Saturday. This will apply to all tractor trailer trucks, tandems, and special permit haulers. Our snow and ice teams are ready. We are fully staffed. Our equipment is ready, and we have been working since earlier this week on pre-treating the roadways, stocking up on salt and materials, and finalizing our storm plans. We expect to deploy up to 4,000 pieces of snow fighting equipment at the height of this storm. Again, and we are asking everybody again to avoid travel with the exception of essential trips tomorrow on Saturday. This storm has a very long duration. We expect that cleanup is gonna take some time after the snow stops falling. So we expect that we will also be prone to drifting with the winds that are expected and because of the nature of the snow. So travelers should expect slippery conditions that will persist well into Sunday and even into Sunday night. We thank everybody and really appreciate everybody who's going to make safe decisions tomorrow. And again, can't, can't reiterate enough that you should avoid travel except for essential trips. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to General Manager Poftak about the team. Thank you, Administrator Gulliver. Um, thank you for joining today. Uh, you know, as you've heard from the previous speakers, this is going to be among one of the most challenging days for the MBTA's operations. I wanna second what the previous speakers have said about avoiding 
any unnecessary travel. If you do not need to go out tomorrow, please stay home. I do want to assure everyone that the MBTA is fully staffed and we are in full preparation mode for this event. We'll be running trains overnight to make sure that the tracks remain clear. We'll be running snowplow equipped trains throughout the day tomorrow. We'll have emergency crews on standby to deal with any issues. We'll also be running ice cutter trains uh, to make sure we care for the overhead catenary should any ice develop. And we'll also have increased staffing and we'll have a number of MBTA staff and contractor staff deployed to, uh, to remove snow at our, our stations and other facilities. In terms of specific service impacts, um, we will be suspending the D branch of the green line at the end of service tonight, and we will not run any train service on the D branch for the entire day tomorrow. However, we will have replacement bus service available that will run from Riverside to, Ken to, to Kenmore. We'll also be suspending the Mattapan line tomorrow. And again, we will replace it with bus service. We're also going to suspend uh, the uh, commuter ferry to Charlestown. The Hingham and Hull ferry does not run on the weekend, so there will be no ferry service tomorrow and that specifically impacts Charlestown. We're removing all of our 60 foot buses from service at, uh, at the end of service tonight. They have, uh, they, they, they struggle relative to our 40 footers in the snow. And as a preemptive uh, move, we're gonna take them out of service. Many of our bus routes will operate on snow routes um, as needed during the storm. Both commuter rail and subway will operate on a Saturday, regular Saturday schedule tomorrow. So no, no real service impact there. We are canceling three uh, pieces of weekend work that we had planned to do. We had planned to do work on the Silver Line, the D branch of the Green Line and the Fitchburg Line. We will not be doing that work, so it will not have an impact on service. Again, I wanna reiterate, travel will be very difficult tomorrow. You should not be out traveling unless you have something essential to do. Um, as you've heard from the administrator and we've talked with our municipal, uh, several of our municipal partners, at the snow rates we're looking at, it is going to be very difficult for them to keep the roads clear throughout the day. We anticipate that there will be delays, particularly on bus service. Anyone who is out traveling should take that into account, leave extra time, and also expect that there may be delays as, uh, as the day unfolds. I wanna encourage people to continue to monitor mbta.com as well as our various social media feeds for specific information on schedule changes. And we will, uh, you know, we will continually monitor this storm uh, throughout the day and obviously make any announcements as needed about any additional changes in service. So with that, uh, I will close and invite Secretary Theohardes to join us. Thank you and good evening. Our team at the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs and our agencies are actively monitoring this significant storm and preparing for the snow and wind and other impacts that it will bring. We're fully staffed to deal with the impacts across our system, particularly concerning our impacts from the storm that include impacts to coastal communities with coastal floodings and roadways and potential down power lines from the wind and snow. The Department of Public Utilities is continuing to work with the utility companies on their plans for storm preparation and response with an expected large amount of snow as well as high winds with gusts particularly on the Cape and Islands and along the eastern coast up to 70 miles an hour. We are expecting that power lines will be under great stress and there will be outages. We're expecting the outages to be concentrated especially in eastern Massachusetts, including the coast, the, south, the southeastern portion of the state and on the Cape and Islands. To prepare for this effort, utility companies have secured additional external crews from outside of the state to assist our crews in repairing any damage to the system and restoring customer outages. These crews have been staged across the state in critical locations, so they're there before the snow starts falling, including on the North Shore and in the Cape and Islands. Importantly, the utility companies issued notices and were, uh, beginning yesterday have been in contact with critical care facilities across the state and residents who are dependent on life-saving equipment and need to prepare for those outages. 
We'd like to remind the public that with forecasted winds, there is a potential for downed electrical wires. Please do not go near downed wires. When sustained winds are below 35 miles an hour and crews are able to get out on the roadways and the snow is not at whiteout levels, crews will be able to get up in the bucket trucks and begin making these restoration efforts. It is going to be cold Saturday night. And so for those who are impacted by power, you may need to seek assistance with emergency shelters and, and Don Brantley from MEMA will talk more about that. Please have an emergency kit prepared, flashlights, batteries, things you need in the event of an outage. Compounding the storm's impacts will be astronomical high tides, which will likely cause some coastal flooding and erosion during Saturday morning and evening's high tide, and again on Sunday morning in places that tend to experience coastal flooding. Additionally, while DCR's parkways remain open to vehicle traffic, they may experience temporary closures due to flooding and hazardous conditions. And I would echo all of my colleagues here who have said, please avoid travel. Please also don't go to DCR parks during this event. Many of our parking lots at our coastal facilities will be closed. Uh, and I have a list of, of other closures as well. This is not a time to go out looking to spend time in the snow at a park. DCR is also mirror mirroring the parking bans issued by its municipal partners throughout the entire parkway system. Parking bans along agency roadways will be going into effect at very, various times starting this evening in line with the mu municipality that they're located in. And they will be uh, in effect until shortly after snow operations and removal is complete. In addition, as I mentioned, DCR will be closing all of its coastal parking lots. And beginning tonight at the end of normal operations, DCR will also be closing agency managed recreational facilities, including ice rinks in the city of Boston and the Leo J. Martin ski track in Weston to be able for us to fully focus on snow removal activities. We anticipate the reopening of these facilities on Sunday. However, times of reopening may vary based on snow removal efforts. So please check in with the department's website before heading out. Lastly, oftentimes cleanup efforts can take several days depending on the severity of the storm. And so we appreciate your patience as we work to clear parkways, pedestrian routes, sidewalks, and parking lots. Thanks everyone, please stay safe. And I will turn it over to MEMA Director Don Brantley. Thank you, Secretary. As the governor said, MEMA is activating the state's emergency operations center and both of our regional operations centers beginning Saturday morning and continuing for the duration of the storm in order to monitor the impacts, coordinate response efforts, and provide support to impacted communities. In addition to coordinating with MassDOT and the Department of Public Utilities, we are coordinating closely with all of our state agencies, local officials, and other response partners. While we are used to winter storms in Massachusetts, this storm is expected to have significant impacts tomorrow. We're seeing a lot of stories on the media about folks taking steps to be prepared for the storm, and this is a really great thing. We want everyone to take some basic steps to prepare today so that you are safe tomorrow. Power outages are a concern, particularly in Eastern Massachusetts and the Cape and Islands. Please keep your cell phone and laptop and other electronic devices fully charged. If you have an emergency generator, make sure you have fuel and know how to operate it safely outside away from your home. Have flashlights, batteries, and any other supplies that you may need if you lose power. And we've been sharing this message for several days now that if your medical equipment uses electricity, please talk to your healthcare providers, utility company, and your personal support network for options during an outage and consider whether you might need to relocate to a shelter or a warming center if one is opened in your area. All shelters should be accessible and able to support individuals with disabilities. Ensure your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms are working and have fresh batteries. If you receive dialysis, critical medical treatments, or home health care services, we hope that you've worked with your medical provider to determine how to maintain care and service should you be unable to leave your home during or after the storm. If you do have an emergency during the storm, please call 911. Residents living in coastal areas that have flooded during previous coastal flooding events should prepare for flooding during this storm. Be a good neighbor. We all know our neighborhoods have individuals who could use some extra help during storms. Please check on them before, during, and after the storm. And if you have a fire hydrant nearby, help your local fire department and your neighbors by shoveling it out. 
Finally, we have been coordinating with our local partners, particularly on the South Shore and the Cape and the islands regarding shelters that they will be opening for the storm. Please check with your local public safety officials for shelter information and for other resources during and after the storm. You can also call 211 for any non-emergency storm questions. For more preparedness and safety tips, please visit mass.gov forward slash snow. Thank you. Questions? It's probably 